Maureen, welcome. Um, so we're going to get started here. And so a uh, big thank you to everybody for taking time on this this hump day to, to spend some time with us. Quiz how, quick housekeeping, like I mentioned, we are recording this, so we will share uh, some version of this with you guys um, as soon as we get, get around to getting that sent back out. Um, and uh, we're going to go through kind of three parts today. We're going to hear some stories from Dan on deals that he's closed and some lessons learned. And then we're going to go into uh, some new features in ReSquared uh, just as a little sneak peek. Uh, but the goal for you is to walk away of how can you close more deals uh, with these local businesses. And here are some real world examples. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, throw them in the chat. We'll be monitoring the, the chat and trying to address some questions. And we want to keep this as engaging as possible. If nobody's chatting, that means we're boring you guys. So if you like what we're saying or if it's helpful, throw a little smile face in the chat or something so you know, uh, so we know that this is landing with you guys. So again, thank you for the time. And without further ado, I want to introduce to everybody Dan from Lamar Companies. I won't butcher his last name. Um, uh, super excited to have him on board. Uh, Dan is one of what we call the OGs of ReSquared, one of our earliest customers um, and one of the by far the best closers um, that's ever used a product with well over 10 deals. So welcome, Dan, and we're excited to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Excited to get into this topic. Um, I'm Daniel Tartakovsky. I work with Lamar Companies. Been working here for about five years. Uh, as T said, I'm one of the first guys that jumped on ReSquared. Uh, Ryan, I think, was one of the guys that brought me on. Uh, basically, they reached out to me via LinkedIn, said, hey, we have this great new tool that we'd love for you to try out. Uh, I responded with always interested in new tools that could help me lease out spaces, especially for harder to lease shops. So kind of started the conversation there once Griffin and I, once I met Griffin and T and they kind of sent me down the road of price points and everything. I said, all right, this is a no brainer. Uh, their price point made so much sense. That I said, if we close one deal in every three months, we pay for this platform. Um, and since then we've done exactly that. We've paid over hand over fist for the platform. Um, like T said, I think I closed about 10 to 12 deals using ReSquared. All of them were in difficult shopping centers. Uh, this is not a tool that you're going to use for your top end, best of the market, where people are banging down your door to get in. This is a tool that you use for your down, grunge and dirty, hard to lease out spaces, those value add shopping centers that you're going to bring back into a class A shopping center that you're going to sell for your profits for your company. Um, but T, I'll kick it off to you to start wherever you think is necessary. Let's do it. So as a quick agenda, uh, we're going to go over some real stories and real examples with Dan and, and closing a variety of deals here. And along the way, we'll underscore some tips and some learnings that he's uh, kind of really underscored um, in, in executing. And then lastly, we'll answer some questions and preview some of the newest features that usually only our customers um, are able to see. So Dan, I think as a, an introductory starting point, um, can you think of kind of maybe you could give the, the audience an overview of maybe just for 30 seconds of what you were doing before ReSquared as far as prospecting for local businesses, how that looked after, and then jump into maybe a couple examples of some deals that you were able to close. Yeah, sure. So before ReSquared, things were always harder, right? Uh, I came on to an older company. They've been around for 52 years plus. Um, when I got on, didn't have any experience in the leasing world. They were taking a chance on me and I was taking a chance. I moved out to Arizona. And one of the first things that my boss told me is, hey, you know what, go knock on every single retail door inside of this town and within a 20 mile radius, talk to the owners, find out when their leases are up, find out how interested they are in moving. I said, you know what, that sounds great, boss man. I'm going to go right for it. Next day, went out, started banging down all the doors, got about six hours in and felt absolutely devastated. I cannot tell you how many people told me to get lost get out of their shop. They've been there for 25 years. Their parents started the business. They're never leaving. The landlord's their uncle. It's their best friend. They've been there for so long. They treat them so well. Long story short, I got the door closed on my face so often in the beginning. It wasn't even funny. It was one of those moments where you kind of look at it and you go, what did I just get myself into? Moved across the country to start a job that I don't know what it is. And, uh, and it looks like everybody hates me before I even get to talk to them. So before ReSquared, going for those small shop tenants and the hard to lease places was really difficult. A lot of it was just your, your everyday canvassing, knocking on the doors, getting the no's. 
a lot of it was cold calling, emailing. Uh, I followed Beth Azor when I first got on. I said, you know what? It sounds like social media is this phenomenal place that I can start getting leads from. Spent hours and hours a day just going through Facebook and searching business Facebook groups that were in my small area of that shopping center. Um, basically got nowhere with it in, in, in truth. I must have emailed hundreds of businesses and Facebook chatted hundreds of them. Most of the time I was getting customer support responses like, Hey, if I was going for an insurance guy, I'd get an insurance agent calling me the next day. Like, Hey, are you interested in car insurance? And I'm like, no, but are you interested in coming to a new shopping center? <laughs> Love to talk to whoever is in charge over there. Uh, needless to say, it was more notes. Um, then the new world came and I found Resquared. or these guys found me, jumped on board, started utilizing the tool, realized everything that I was doing, I could do from home in an hour that would normally take me a week of prep and driving miles, getting in front of people and getting devastated when they say no and you hear that hundredth no of the day. Um, so Resquare came into my life, started using it right away, especially on some of my very difficult to lease shopping centers in South Jersey, Arizona, Texas, uh, Ohio. Once I started jumping on the Resquare train, it was kind of game over from there. I realized how much time I saved and how much time I would then have to go out and do all their marketing campaigns on some bigger spaces, do some of my, uh, do some marketing campaigns on some easier to lease spaces because the reality is once I got on Resquared and I fully understood how to use the tools and the programs, I really didn't need to go Canvas anymore. And I basically use Resquared as my number one tool for hard to lease small shop spaces at this point. Um, I mean, basically, whenever I get a shopping center that's a little on the lower side, very value add, not going to be an easy start point. I go straight to Resquared. I start hanging on cafes. Uh, locksmiths, insurance companies, all of your small guys that often get passed over when you're doing a lot of this outreach. You're not really thinking of, of how many insurance guys are expanding all the time and how much space they're taking. You're not really thinking of those mom and pop uh, cafes and coffee shops that have been around for 25 years or on a horrible deal. They don't even know they're on a horrible deal. And uh, essentially opening up the avenue for a lot of startup businesses to come in through Resquared. And I was pinging people that were working out of their garage. Their, their business address was their home address. Um, from there, kind of just started talking to everybody. And that's what I did before Resquared. That's what I started to do using Resquared. I'll let T, our, uh, our host, kind of go from there and point me in the right direction. No, I think hearing the the stories of just the time saving and I'm in, you know, earlier you were mentioning um, an example of a deal in Ohio of a medical use um, that you had originally reached out into Ohio. Could you tell that story? Yeah. So this one, this one's always fun and interesting. So I was using Resquared in Cleveland, Ohio, reaching out to a bunch of medical users, had a hard to lease shopping center over there in a place called Fairview Park. Um, had a bunch of vacancy. I think I was looking at like six to seven units between 600 square feet and 7,000 square feet. Most of them being in that 2,000 square foot range. So I knew, all right, you know what? Let me try to get some medical in here. They signed long-term leases. We're willing to pay out their TIAs. Would love to get some deals done. So I start reaching out to a whole bunch of medical users. And uh, next thing I know, I get a response from a guy. He says, hey, you know, Thanks for the reach out, but if you can, please take me off my off your list. I'm, uh, I'm moving my whole family to Arizona. Ding, the light bulbs went off. I live in Arizona. Most of my business is done in Arizona. I said, hey, I'd love to find out where you're living. If you're moving your business, I'd love to talk to you about getting something on paper so that we could try to move forward. Um, didn't hear back from him for a week. A week later, gives me a call, says, hey, Dan, you know, I, I like your persistency. I'm moving to this small town in Casa, in Arizona called Casa Grande. He said, I'm not sure if you'll have anything there. I don't want to be driving to Phoenix or to Tucson. I really want to start my business right where I live, be a couple minutes from the house. I said, you'll never believe this, but I actually have the premier shopping center in Casa Grande, Arizona. And when he, I said, where are you moving into? He says, I'm moving into X, Y, and Z community right across the street from the shopping center. I said, brother, listen. You're two minutes away from the shopping center. When you get to Arizona, I would love to give you a tour, show you what we have available. A couple months goes by, get another call. He's now moved his whole family to Arizona. They closed on their house, still doing some online sales for the business, still maintaining their business relationships with their longtime customers. 
So I finally get to them. We go out, we tour, um, take a look at a 2,600 square foot unit. Him and his wife look at me and they go, this is exactly what we need. Um, but we need a three-year term. You know, we need a three-year term. We need a little bit of TIA. This is a new area. Uh, we are started to do our due diligence. We think it'll make sense. Our business model will make sense here. Their business model was mobility plus. Uh, I said, I think it'll be a home run here. I ended up negotiating a, a solid three-year term with, I think we got up to like 12 years of options on their term. Once they started getting in, they were getting really excited with the numbers. So that's a, a story of basically you don't know who you're talking to, what's going on in their lives, when they're moving. And I moved the business from Ohio to Arizona. I say I moved it. They moved themselves. And I just happened to tag on their coattails and annoy them enough so that they finally gave me the opportunity to show them space. And once I showed them the space from there, we were talking. It was clockwork. It was one of the easiest closings I've ever had. Guys were super nice. And um, just one of those stories of you don't know where somebody's going to be in three months time, six months time, or a year time from now. So even when you get a no up front, little bit of persistence, a little bit of, hey, you know, why is it a no? Would love to find out what I could do to improve, you know, what I could do, what's going on with you, with your business. And, you know, you never know what somebody's going to say. They might say we're moving in next door to you and, uh, and to one of your shopping centers. <laughs> I love that story. It's like you can't connect the dots, you know, until you look backwards. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, because I think anybody that's uh, ever, ever closed deals knows um, the importance of persistence. And you know, you can't control the timing. I'm curious, like, what have you learned? Or what are your best practices where let's say you reach out to a, uh, you know, a, a chiropractor or a dentist or whatever, and they say, Yeah, I'm interested in learning more. What do you do next? Well, I know number one, time kills all deals and it works both ways, right? You can either be quick and pushy and that pushes them away and you're going to kill your deal that way just by overloading them with information and trying to get them to jump before they're ready. You can also be a little bit too slow and, and I've lost the deal by being three hours too slow from a plane ride. So mm. I, I know that time kills both deals, but I would definitely say the next step, once you get somebody hooked and they're actually interested and they're going, you know what, I'll give you the time to jump on a call or I'll give you the time to come over and tour is you want to make sure that you know what their needs are. If you're talking to a dentist that's in 4,000 square feet, don't try to show them the 2,000 square foot space or have that conversation of, hey, you know what, you're in 4,000 square feet, you have 12 uh, different units every single one has a hygienist, has different oxygen and nitrous and plumbing in each one. You know, that's a huge build out. What are you thinking? For all you know, their response is, oh, we want to downsize. We want to go to that 3,000, 2,500, 3,000 square foot range. From there, immediately identify your opportunities. Go, all right, what do I have on site? Even if I have the combo units, break a little bit of a unit apart. When you get a deal, especially like you just mentioned, a chiropractor, a dentist, these guys sign long-term deals. They don't like moving. A dentist is going to put 300,000 in his unit if it's small and the number just keeps skyrocketing depending on the dentist. So he wants to be there for 10 years initially and then have options on his lease. So you want to present him a space. Again, we're talking about a dentist and a chiropractor. So you're talking about a medical use. There's going to be a huge build out here. I like to kind of take those guys and present them with what I can get to a vanilla box, a nice blank shell, good floors, good painting, just so that they can envision it. I try to I try to envision what they want. So I'm doing a dentist deal right now. It's funny that you mention it. Show them a couple of units. The unit that I really wanted to hook them on was a combo of two units, a 1500 and an 1838 coming up with 3,430 square feet. So show them the units that I knew that they would like up front. And this was the last unit I showed them. The one benefit that those two combo units had was where I expected they would say we wanted to put our lobby was a really attractive spot that overlooked a big courtyard and other restaurants. And you saw kids running back and forth and all these parents walking around. You saw Harkins in the background. So it was very, very attractive from the lobby standpoint with that activity and the niceness happening outside. Once he saw that, he was sold and said, you know what, Daniel, don't even send me numbers on the other units. I want to I look at this one. Um, from there, right? Now you have them hooked, you have them interested. Now you got to get to an LOI. You got to pass the LOI and go to a draft lease. There's where those lease negotiations come in. Obviously, if we're talking about a well-established business, business, you're going to be looking at a completely different demographic from 
maybe a, a mom and pop, you know, with the dentist, you're going to be looking at TIAs, HVAC caps, cam caps, anything that makes them feel comfortable to move in that you know you could get from the landlord, you're going to do to try to get them in. Um, and you're going to keep them on, right, the, the positive attentions. You don't want to steer them away of, yeah, this build out's going to be 400000 and you're already in a space that you don't need to worry about. So you want to just keep pointing them to the positive way and help them with their contractors, help them with their architects, help them build out the space too. That makes sense. So I got a, a bunch of follow-up questions, but I want to do a quick pause here um, to as a thank you to everybody that is uh, has joined us right now and is is you know taking the time out of their busy schedules to to participate. Uh, we're gonna do a little uh, a little giveaway where we're gonna for the first person to put in the chat. That's not a part of the re-squad. Sorry, re-squad. Um, first person to put in the chat their favorite local pizza spot and what they their favorite order at that pizza spot. First person to put it in the chat, we're going to treat you to a pizza uh, lunch or you know uh, whatever uh, whatever time of day. Uh, so we need the name of the pizza place and your order. So it looks like uh, Denise, I think you won with Olivella's pepperoni um austin i'm so sorry denise put both of them in there uh so don't worry we might do a little something here in a little bit uh but uh wanted to, to just quickly um speak to that and um you know for for our last you know 10 15 minutes here or so i want to just kind of underscore a couple of uh of the things that dan was speaking to here and then follow up with dan um on uh on some of the other tips um one question i want to ask you dan uh is around how many times like how many touch points does it take usually to go from that initial outreach um to actually getting the deal done before you answer that I just want to highlight a couple things that uh, we have found to be really helpful is if you're not getting a response from your outreach, whether that's email or, or Facebook or whatever, it's likely because one, that person thought it was a blast, right? So the question you should ask yourself is, is that email tailored, right? Can it be sent to a small group of people or an infinite amount of people, right? And so we suggest using specific subject lines like specific use versus, you know, a, a particular area. Um, and then lastly, what is the question that we're asking, right? If you're asking for a site tour right away or asking for a meeting right away, you might rub them the wrong way. I'm curious, Dan, from your experience, if you had to just kind of guesstimate here, you know, how many touch points does it take on average, would you say? Because I think people will be surprised by this number to go from, hello, I'm interested to sign contract. You know, it's it's interesting because if we go based off the average, I'd probably say average we're looking at like four to five touch points. Yep. Realistically, it's it's much more to get them on site. Right, we all have those calls every now and then where we pick up the phone and somebody's like, "I'm interested in this space. I want to come tour it." You're like, "Beautiful! I just got through half my workload getting you on site, and you were you did it for me." But the ones that we're talking about now, those hard to lease spot places where you may not be getting responses all the time. I'm, I'm sending two emails. I'm reaching out through Facebook. I'm reaching out through Instagram. I'm reaching out through LinkedIn if they have one. But most importantly, what I love that you said, T, was, was how are you tailoring your first few emails? Does it look like an email blast? Is free plastered on the subject line? If I'm getting that, just like if you were getting that, you're probably going right over it. If I think something's a scam or something's phishing, I'm not going to click it. If I open up an email and it says, we're offering free rent and it's all big and bold. The sentiment is great. Well, free rent, but the, the application is wrong. You don't want to blast that to somebody because they're going to think that it's crap. They're not going to believe you. They're going to go, why would I respond to somebody that's sending this to 10,000 people a day saying I have free space for you? Free mm -hmm. doesn't exist, right? So I'd say your first, definitely the, I use the Resquared tailoring system quite a bit when I send out my emails. I actually go through and I have your guys in coding, check my, check my emails. And a lot of the time I'm surprised to see, oh, you went over a certain word count here. And normally you get a lack of response when you go over that word count, right? Or you put in words that normally get highlighted as a spam word. There's, I, I learned through Resquare not to put free inside of my subject lines. So Again, I'd say I'd say most majority of them on average, you're looking at four to five touch points before you can get them interested enough to come and meet with you and get on site. You also got to remember a lot of these guys are, are operating a business, right? They're they're there. They're the operators. They're not, they don't have 20 employees that's doing everything for them. Their time is valuable. You need to prove to them 
that you are not going to waste their time and that what you're offering is real, true, and advantage for them. So that's kind of how I go about it. Again, using Square, go through their Facebook, go through their Instagram, email them twice. Don't email them twice in a day. Email them once and then send a week later a quick follow-up email. Hey, I wanted to make sure that you saw my last email. Wanted to make sure that you knew I was real and that I'm not just fishing around. Very interested in your business. One thing I love doing is I love putting the business names right inside of the email through the Resquare features. I love putting the business names. If I could find a business person that's attached to it, oh, I'm making, I'm writing their name right in the subject. I love making my emails look like they are directly just for you and nobody else is seeing it. I think when you see an email with your name in it or your business name in it, you're going to take a moment, you're going to read, you're going to go, okay, this person isn't BSing me. They actually have an idea of what I'm doing. And I think that they might be able to help. You. I love it. No, I think, uh, I think everything you're saying resonates with me so much, especially because I think sometimes whatever we're selling, we could think that the whole world revolves around us. But the reality is, like you said, these people are, they have families, they have businesses, they're trying to operate. And I think something that, you know, you spoke to um, about when you do get a response, getting to their needs, I just want to underscore here, we hear from folks of, yeah, I'm getting responses, but I'm not able to move them along. And the reality is, is what happens more often than not is if someone's getting a response and they're just sending them the information, they're not having a chance to actually assess their needs to your point, Dan, and they're not able to understand what those objections are. And so what we recommend and what Dan, I think is, is masterful with is picking up the phone, right? And one of the scripts that you can use is, you know, hey, Mr. Prospect, you know, I, I was about to send you the information you requested, wanted to make sure it got through to you you know, while I have you, do you have any questions on what I just sent over? Because everybody knows in sales, if you're not getting objections, and it's probably not a real deal. And the only way you can over overcome objections is to hear them. Um, and so ultimately, it's your responsibility to, to get that. And then lastly, a lot of folks, you know, will respond just like the gentleman in, in Ohio, right, where they're interested, but the timing isn't right. And I think, Dan, you, you said something I've never heard before, which time kills deals both ways, right? It's not just you being too slow, but also if you're too pushy. And so I think, you know, some things that we recommend is like sending a demand report to show them where, you know, certain medical uses are popular. Um, can you think of uh, any examples of, you know, how, how you kind of keep people in your radar, Dan, without being too pushy? hundred percent, but I'd love to touch base on this one thing that you said Please. first, which was you move to a phone call. I can't tell you how many guys I talked to and they're, they're 22 emails in. I'm like, why don't you pick up the, they're talking about three topics or 22 emails in. I'm like, pick up the phone, call the guy. Mm. Everything will run quicker, smoother, and better. If you can get on the phone fast and upfront and don't try to sell them when you pick up the phone, figure out what their needs are figure out what their dilemmas are, figure out what their hurdles are, and then try to solve it for them. Go, I go, okay, so, so your lease is up in two years. You have a neglectful landlord. Your roof is leaking. I can help you with these by moving you over here. So I love that point. Get on the call as quick as possible, but don't sell them on the call. Just listen on the call. Become very good at asking questions that kind of, you don't, right? If you ask the wrong question, they're going to get turned off. But if you ask questions in a very genuine way, they're going to be very turned on. They're going to give you genuine responses. You're going to figure out a much quicker way on how to actually deal with this person, how they like to maneuver. Sometimes you pick up a call, right? In the first three sentences, they're cursing. You're like, okay, I understand what kind of person I'm dealing with now. We're not dealing with the, with the correct, with, you know, type. I'm not saying hello, doctor, X, Y, and Z. I wanted to inform, you know, you're going, hey, Joe, just want to let you know, you change how you speak a little bit, your demeanor and, and your attitude towards it. But sorry, yeah. but I love the call option. What was the second part of that question? No, no problem. I think, uh, you know, we, I think you really underscored it, which was like, you know, just the genuinely caring about what their needs are. And I think that is the the highlight, you know, with the follow-up. And I think, you know, just to underscore again, you know, um, how important follow-up is, you know, I think that uh, those four touch points are like actually communicating with people, but there's probably dozens of other touch points of messages and calls or that don't connect, you know, and so I just want to underscore that. Um, and we have about two minutes uh, here. Um, so I'm going to just do a 30 second overview of a, of a few sneak uh, peeks of some new features. And then Dan, I want to give you the last 30 seconds or so to kind of, you know, underscore any other tips or suggestions for people to, to close more deals. So couple of things to highlight. So one of them, uh, Dan already touched on a little bit of the email assistant where we're going to actually grade for you your template to make sure you're not using those spam words and, you know, help you understand what those are. 
And also, you know, time is money. And so we allow you to actually schedule out um, in the future. Uh, so you're able to kind of batch your outreach. Secondly, here we have our demand reports, which are a great thing to use in terms of keeping the conversation going with prospects without being pushy, right? It's a value add them knowing that, hey, did you know that, you know, pizza is more searched in this zip code than it is in the zip code you're currently in? Lastly, or second to last year, we also, you know, want to eliminate friction by making it easy to, to get target lists where we're looking at things in the back end of who's growing and who's not um, incorporating in, you know, hot leads, if you will, um, to ultimately set you up for success. So uh, before we, we run out of time here, Dan, what would be your, your one tip to somebody that's maybe new to selling, you know, these local deals or, you know, what, what's, what would you part everybody with um, for the last advice here? I got two for you real quick. One's on people, one's on emails. When you get to the point where you're going to send over your numbers, biggest mistake I always see is people send their numbers to mom and pop tenants and to tenants that are not in the retail commercial world, and they send their per square foot numbers on an mm -hmm. annual or monthly basis. Break your numbers down. Go ten dollars per. You know, for our last you know minute or two here, uh, for someone that's you know maybe struggling with selling to local businesses or new to selling to local businesses, what tips would you leave uh, those folks with to, to do better and, and be more effective? All right, so I'll give you three tips: two on people themselves, one on one on the closing of the deal, one on emails itself and writing it. I see a huge mistake in the industry all the time, and the number one mistake that I'm seeing is when you get to the point when you're going to send somebody your numbers, we're sending them like they're a broker. We're sending the numbers going on 2,600 square feet. You're going to be paying $12 plus triple net. Then you're going to be having 3% annual in, annual increases. Instead of going that route, type the entire thing out. Go on 2,600 square feet. You're going to get X amount of free period. You're going to get X amount of construction time. Explain the difference between the construction time and a free period and then go into your actual rates, go $12 per square foot on 2,600 square feet plus triple net. Your monthly payment in your rent is gonna be $2,600. Your triple nets payments are gonna be $750. Break the entire line down, type it out so that they can visually see what they're gonna be paying. Again, we're talking about difficult to lease small shop space. You're not, most of the time, they're not gonna be dealing with a broker on their side, this is one of the first few times they're going to see something like that in writing. They're not going to know, nor are they even going to know how to do the equation to break it down. People in the industry, we think it's such a simple equation. You just multiply by your square footage, then divide by 12, you get your monthly rate. But the regular person doesn't really know how to do that. They're going, oh my, what's $10 per square foot? What's $12 per square foot? It's right over the head. Break it down very simple so that they can have a full understanding of what they're going to be paying. I even like to throw in my utilities. Hey, and you're not separately metered. They're going to be a low water usage, low water usage if this property runs X amount. Um, your garbage is going to be on your head. So help them set up with their utilities, help them understand everything, break it down in very layman's terms so that when they see it, they know exactly what they're paying. That goes a long way to get another response back and then move to the tour. Once they're comfortable seeing that, they're going, all right, now I'll meet with you. Now I'll go tour the space. And then when you have them for the tour, that's when the real selling starts. Mm -hmm. Now, your other tip, right? During our during our, our uh, video, we were talking about how do you follow up with people without being pushy, right? Because I don't want to make, uh, I don't want you to feel like I'm using you for business. I, I truly care about you. I want you to be a successful tenant. I want you to stay here forever. I want to use you as stories later on when I'm giving other tenants, this guy expanded X, Y, and Z, that kind of stuff. So, I had a deal through Resquare. It was a children's uh, daycare center. It was in Ventnor, New Jersey. And I was chasing this operator down for months. All right. I found them through Resquared, looked at their history, stellar operator. She wanted to get back into business, just moved back from Florida. She had like a thousand parents contacting her a week to open something up. What happened just during COVID time is the at her half of COVID, she was getting sick. The family was getting sick, all this stuff, right? Wanted to not be pushy. I sent out a text. Hey, how's, how's the family? How's everything going? How are you? Daniel, I'm not good right now. I'm in the hospital, let's say. Mm -hmm. Say, you know what? I completely understand. Please get better. Let me know if, if and when you're ready to speak. I'll check in on you. I just want to make sure that you're good. You know, let it go. Let it go for a little bit. Give them two weeks. Give them three weeks. Pick up the phone. 
call them, follow up, go, hey, I just wanted to make sure that you're all good, that everything's copacetic with you and your family. I know you're going through some hard times. Come in as that friend. Come in as that person that actually cares for the other party. Come, Don't come in and go, hey, it's been three weeks. I want to talk to you about the numbers. I want to talk to you about the LOI. Let's get this deal moving forward, right? Maybe in New York, that'll work. In Texas, it won't. All right. You want to call, you want to, you want to ask about the vacation. You want to ask about the kids. You want to take notes on your people. If you got a guy that's going to do a bigger deal, you know, and you're on a call with him or you're seeing an email, put a little note on his email, put a little note next to his name in your phone. Josh from uh, X, Y, and Z company, uh, two kids playing soccer. You know what I mean? And then when your next call, don't start with business, start with uh, how's how's Jimmy? How's the kid? How how's the soccer camp going this year? How's the sleepaway camp? How's the wife handling it? How's the husband handling it? All of that. You welcome you you come in with warmth. They feel like they're your friend. You are their friend. You're genuine. You want the best for them, and then they will tell you subtly or out loud when it's time to talk about business. I've chased people for months before we talk about business. And then we started talking about business and it was some of the quickest deals I've ever done. I mean, it was spitfire um, right there. It was just done because I already built the relationship. They trusted me. I trusted them. I knew what they said would happen. They knew what I said we would get it done. So always interpersonal relationships come before the business. The business comes second because once you have that relationship, the business will follow always. Those would be my, my tips for Quick email and for how to deal with somebody going through a deal, right? That's so fire, Dan. Seriously, I think that's like the greatest advice that you could possibly give. And I think, you know, they're they're in a lot of ways intermingled, right? Like where you you care about the person and, and in setting up for success, or you're gonna break it down, you know, in in layman's terms on the on the dollars and cents. And you care about the person. So the first question is, are you okay? You know, not Hey, did you get my proposal or whatever, you know, and and one, one story that I had is there was a guy I was working with, I won't say which type of company, but a really large uh, retailer. um, And he had verbally committed to a deal. And then he just ghosted us for like, uh, five months or whatever. Um, and we made the mistake of this was really early on in my career of just pounding. I'm like every week, like, you know, see proposal attached, see proposal attached, like any questions on it, oh, well, like it was all about the proposal. And he sent me an email or a text. And he was like, um, hey, I'm so sorry, but my uh, my son got diagnosed with leukemia. And so I've been busy with, you know, trying to help my son survive. Like, sorry, I haven't gotten to your damn proposal, basically, you know, and like ever since that moment, I was like, wow, like you never know what's going on in someone's life, you know, and it's like the people that are most angry or rude to you are probably dealing with something in their lives, you know, and so you got to have that yeah. that big picture, you know, so um, I think what you just said is straight fire. Yeah, I, I would always say, don't take things personal, right? It's business. Everybody has their entire lives. Everybody's the main character of their show. Everybody's got other things going on. Somebody verbally commits to you. Don't assume that they're just ghosting you because they don't like you anymore. They don't want to do the deal. Most people have the decency, if they're not going to move forward, to pick up the phone, give you a call and go, hey, you know what? It's not going to work out right now. Let's try again in six months. Yeah. But right, yeah. like like you said, that constant follow up from a business standpoint, and then the guy texts you apologies and says, you know, my, I'm going through something with my family, with my son, my attention's here. It's it's almost like you feel bad because you took the human out of the deal. You took yeah. the fact that that's another person living a life with other things going on outside of the deal, and you badgered them on signing a proposal. And then it's kind of like, damn, if I maybe if I went a different route and I said. Hey, Jim, is everything all right? I haven't heard back from you in a while. I want to make sure I didn't do anything to upset you. And I want to make sure that we're still good. I want to make sure that it may not be right now, but in the future, we could do business together. And then Jim's going to tell you, he's going to say, you know what? Everything's not that good right now. You know, this is what's going on. This is why I've been slow to respond. And from there you go, I completely understand, man. Let me know if I could do anything to help you in the meantime. I'll give you some time. Let's check back in in a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. I'd love to do the business with you, but we're not in a rush to get it done. If the business gets done, it gets done. You're still going to make the money. Everybody's going to be happy. They're going to be happy. You'll be happy, but don't take the human out of the deal, right? When you're dealing with, you know, some of the biggest boys in the world and you're dealing with three attorneys and you don't even talk to anybody or see anybody. Yeah, that's when it's all business, but 
what we talk about, what Resquared is so good at is those small shops, that interpersonal community kind of relationship, that mom and pop kind of vibe, the, the guy that opened five locations that's trying to get to manage all the time in all five locations. And you just calm it down a little bit with those guys. You're not dealing with the attorneys that went to school for this. You're dealing with your entrepreneurs, your hustlers, your community driven individuals that started that business for the community is there to make people's lives better. And your job should always be, let me make your life easier and better too. Straight fire, man. You fantastic job, Dan. You killed it, man. This was been uh, this has been really fun. Um, and to the pepperoni pizza winner, um, a shout out to you. Excited to uh, to support the local pizza shop. And Dan, thank you for going out of your way, especially on the road to uh, to spend some time with us, man. So this was super helpful and fun. And that thirty minutes flew by in two seconds. Oh, dude, I, I thought I was talking too much. It went by so quick. I was like, oh, I looked out at the clock. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <I didn't have laughs> no, it's a good thing, bro. It's a good thing. You did. You seriously, man. Uh, like, no bullshit. That was awesome. Um, like, especially that last part, bro. Like, don't take the human out of the deal. Like, God damn, you need to start selling some T-shirts or something. You know, I'm like, <laughs> that, was, that was fire, man. So we'll uh, we'll get this uh, kind of, you know, uh, cleaned up a little bit and, and shared with some of the recording. But, you know, from from Tyler to, to Dan, thank you, man. Thank you, brother. I, I'm happy to do it. Love to do it more. Could do so many different topics. And right. One other thing too, always help the, the younger brokers, right? Like mm. I find it so incredible when I'm going to these events or I'm going into a new market and I'm dealing with some of these older brokers that have been established and been there for so long. They don't know my name. I email them. I don't get a response. I get cold blasted or, or I call them and I've actually had it in certain states. We all know where, where the real hustle and bustle goes on, right? <laughs> certain states, I get it. Like, who are you? And I tell them who I am. And they're like, what do you want from me? What, what can we do together? It's like so quick. Yeah. And then, right. I, but then on the counter side, you go and you deal with other guys that have been in the industry for a long time. Other girls that have been in the industry for a long time. What do you find? I'd love to meet with you. I'd love to go out for yeah. lunch with you. I'd love to get coffee with you. Now, who's going to be doing better numbers in 10 years? The person that's meeting with all the young guys and girls that are in the industry that are pushing and that will eventually get to those senior roles and eventually get in there or the guy that's going to tell you, piss off, there's nothing that we can do together right now. I agree. Obviously, I'm going to remember that person that took the hour out of their day, out of their life to come and meet up with me when I didn't have anything to offer. Then when I do have something to offer, that's the first person I'm going to call. Love it, man. Yeah. Pay, pay it forward, you know, and, uh, and paying it forward, it been, you know, all, all ships rise with the high tide, man. So yeah, everybody watching this, you know, take that call from that junior person and, and give them the time of day. Cause, uh, that, that junior person is probably gunning for your, uh, your seat one day. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you don't want to piss them off and get them even more motivated to, to outwork you. I know that's, that's my experience. When someone tells me, no, I'm like, all right, game on then, bud, you know? Oh yeah. I get that's most of this industry's experience. We all have egos. We all have big heads. We're all like, Oh, you don't, you want you don't want to meet with me? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that. I'm gonna put that in my little notebook. Yeah. It's challenge accepted. <laughs> and in and in three years when I'm in a position that you need me, I'll remember this. Yeah. I'll still do the deal, but I'll remember it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No, we uh we gotta do uh some sort of like like a series, you know, where we do this like every month or you know every few weeks or something. Uh, because you yeah, you just got too much fire, dude. And you're so good at like being able to steer that kind of conversation, right? Like, like I, I'm, I will, I'm quick with it, but I need, right. That's one half. You need that person to steer it, ask a couple questions and take like a little step back and then you go, and then you're firing in. Well, we could do this on so many topics, but I, I love the idea of doing something in person too. Maybe I'll fly out to you, go walk a shopping center, discuss it, put in some headphones that the noise is good. and Get in the zone. I love it. Yeah. Here. I'm I'm going to bring, um, I bought some new mics. I'm going to bring them to Vegas. Uh, so uh, are you, are you doing the Vegas show? What kind of a question is that? Of course. Yeah, I was about to say that was a, that was a dumbass question. So we should do, uh, <laughs> that's going to be here in like, you know, a month and a half or whatever. And then we should do something uh, uh, in the fall. So I'll, I'll set something up with you, man. And um, yeah, man, like this is, this has just been like, you know, that, uh, the, the idea of like zone a genius, you know, or you just like shit just like flies by like this has just been, you know, we're in the zone, man. Um, So I really enjoyed this, Dan. 100%. And I love your podcast. I There was 
I think it was the third or the fourth one. You did a podcast with somebody who really highlighted small businesses and going to chamber events and all of that stuff. Dude, I listened to that one like three times. Every time she spoke, I was like, I do this. This Somebody else is finally talking about Because I go to all these chamber <laughs> events and I'm doing all these community things and events and I get so many leads from it. And I don't, I never see another broker. I don't even see residential brokers going. And I'm always shocked. Like, how are you guys missing out on, on 55 of your local businesses being in one room, the operators of them. So your backyard, I, even <laughs> it's your backyard. You might as well get involved. I think, I think getting involved in your community and getting involved in some of those small stuff goes such a long way, even just for the for the appearance of I'm committed to the community. I'm here with you guys riding it or dying it. And I, we want to take this to the next level. So nice I love your you. podcast, love the bat one in particular. Uh, and then I love, I love this idea. So I, I do it anytime you, you ever need it. You're the man, Dan, the love is mutual, bro. Um, and uh, we got to, got to keep the human in the deal. So um, uh, I, uh, I'll, I'm going to remember that bro. Um, and so uh, thank you again. And uh, we'll, we'll get some recordings, um, you know, cleaned up and we'll do another one of these soon, bro. Beautiful. Love it. And uh, I'll see you soon, dude. Look forward to it, Dan. Safe travels, bro. See you, man. Thank you, brother.